American journalists do a lot of things right, do a lot of things good, and we struggle with uh, mistakes and, and, uh, uh, and, and are con constantly either learning new lessons or sometimes relearning old lessons. Uh, I, an example would be that in the, in the months leading up to the war in Iraq, uh, the New York Times and a lot of our uh, press that should have been reporting on the failures of U.S. intelligence um, weren't. They were they were parroting the the, uh, the government line. But one thing that that sometimes gets lost in that is that the Washington Bureau of Night Ritter newspapers was reporting every single thing that we learned later about the breakdowns in American intelligence. So I, I think that was an example almost 10 years ago now, um, I guess over 10 years ago now, that illustrates both the strength and weakness of the American press. You know, we, we got swept up in the national shock and, and fervor of patriotism following the attack on 9-11 and didn't play our watchdog role as effectively as we should as, as an industry. But within the industry, there was somebody that was doing it right and, and playing that iconic role that, that we like in the press. And you go back a generation further when Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein became icons of journalism with their reporting that brought down the, uh, the Nixon presidency they also were a small minority. Now, they were more effective than Knight Ritter at getting the word out, but the, you know, the great journalists who have given American journalism perhaps the iconic uh, uh, reputation that you see are usually lonely people fighting a battle and standing out from a group of pretty good and sometimes not so good journalists where a lot of people working hard, believe a lot in freedom of the press and our First Amendment. But whether it's deadline pressure or economic pressure or just human failings, we don't always do our best job. But sometimes some people do a really good job and inspire the rest of us to try and catch up. I think sincerely that more than 200 years of doing these battles around the First Amendment it has created a resilience in the American people that, that is extremely valuable and is worth looking, looking up to. As Russia now begins to deal with the media marketplace and the people and the candidates, and th those, those issues, I, I think that we can work together to help each other understand how to deal with um, issues of corruption, uh, voter fraud, and so on. I, I grew up in journalism in Chicago, which, which could teach Russians some great things about corruption. I mean, when I started at the Chicago Tribune, there were editors who had covered Al Capone, you know, Capone. And uh, Mayor Daley is believed to have stolen the election to have John F. Kennedy elected, and Kennedy would then stare down Khrushchev in the Cuban Missile crisis. So, so corruption, election corruption, it's been a part of our American history. And I, I, I think that Russians can, can learn from how we have dealt with it o over time. I think one thing that's true about the American media is that we know what we don't know. <laughs> and what we don't know is how to get back to uh, financial stability into a public trust, which is journalism. You know, I was fortunate to grow up in journalism at a time when money was no object. Now money is every object in journalism. And so it's, it's a crisis point. And I do think that American journalists and business people, they see the challenge and they're working, they're working it out, but they don't, they don't have the answers yet.